and welcome back to another day with Shorty Vaughn. Thanks for joining Crazy, my not dangerous. Glad to have you. Um, today we're going to be doing all kinds of things here in the kitchen. You ever have that day where you feel like everywhere you go, everything is empty and everything needs to be refilled? That's the day I'm having. I went to go put soap on my hands to wash my hands. There's no soap in the soap dispenser. I took a shower and I'm pressing the pump a bunch of times. And so I've got to refill that. I went to go make a little bit of breakfast and no salt and pepper. So we've got to refill a bunch of stuff and then we're going to get to the fun stuff. We're going to be trying out um, an egg substitution recipe. We're going to be baking some easy bake cookies because my cloche is completely empty and that's just not cutting it. Andrew's got to have a little dessert, got to have a little tasty bite at the end of the day. So we're going to be making some easy bake cookies. And then at the same time, we're going to go ahead and dehydrate or toast some of that bread that I did not care for. Um, and the reason we're going to do all three is because I'm going to turn my oven on. If I'm going to turn my oven on, I'm going to pack that sucker just as full as I can because it takes the same amount of electricity whether I'm baking a tray of cookies or whether it's really loaded. So you might as well get every drop out of it that you can. That's a great way to save a buck. Okay, so this is a product that I buy at Costco. It's a soft soap advanced clean and I use this for refilling the caddy in our shower dispenser. I like the caddy in the shower um, because it attaches to the wall and because it eliminates a bunch of bottles from the shower and there are no accidents with spills and what have you so you're not losing any product with the caddy um at our age spills can be dangerous because we could very easily slip and fall and nobody needs a slip and fall so i'm going to go ahead and refill the shower caddy dispenser it looks like this I guess there was a little bit in it, but for some reason, just not pumping out for me. But it's also pretty empty. I want to make sure that Andrew has soap in the shower when he goes to clean up. So I'm going to refill this. And then I'm also going to refill the soap dispenser for the hand wash station. This is very economical. Um, I think this is about $8. This will last us about six months. Um, and I don't water it down and it works great. I feel like it washes very well and it says it's antibacterial and enriched with moisturizers. Couldn't we use some of that? So it's awkward to fill this. So it is much easier if I stabilize it in a coffee cup, pop the top off. I'm sure it has one of these lovely little things. That one popped off relatively easy. I'll consider that a win today. And we'll just go ahead and give this a big squirt. It's sometimes a little bit awkward because this container is a little bit heavy. But we'll get there. I'm not worried at all. Okay. So almost to the top. I leave a little bit at the top because it does need air to pump out the easiest. Now what I have here is just a little bit of Bayberry um, essential oil. And I think this smells really nice. And we will just take our little dropper and just get a little tiny bit of that. It won't take much. And add that all in. And now we have, nope, that one does not fit. Okay. Put the lid back on before I have an accident because Lord have mercy, if I spill this, my whole house is going to smell like Bayberry for a very long time. And then I have this non-wood chopstick. Chopsticks are one of my favorite things to stir with. And I will just give this a little bit of a stir up so that I'm getting the essential oils all throughout. 
and this makes a nice refreshing shower soap and then I'll wash that chopstick later and the lid goes back on we're all done and I will put that back in the shower okay I love Mrs. Meyer um, I've ran out I don't have a Grove order due until March, and this is the only thing that I'm really out of. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the same kind of uh, solution in this bottle, um, put it back in the bathroom, and then when I get my next Grove Collaborative, I'll have the Mrs. Meyer scent. This is gonna do me for the month of February um, in, the, in that main bathroom. I got a little bit out of the jug so it's not too heavy and now I will just go ahead and tip this over and fill it up like I said these are about eight or nine dollars a jug at the Costco I usually go to a business Costco um, if you are a regular Costco member and you have a business Costco in your area you can use your card to get in there and I like business Costco because it's no frills. There are no samples. There are no TVs. You cannot buy a mattress there. Um, it is mostly for restaurant and business supply. And um, it's quick and easy and faster to get out of than our regular Costco, which my regular Costco is, in fact, a nightmare. Um, the parking is terrible. Uh, the carts are all gone. Um, it's just so congested and crowded and there are people in there the lines are long when you go to business costco you are in and out inside of an hour maybe um and that's going up and down every aisle so yay for business costco okay and then i will just take this same bayberry and this little dropper and i don't know it's about that much it's not much at all but it will be the perfect amount and then I will wash this dropper the little plastic will come off of it and then I will just soak it in a little bit of warm water and maybe a little splash of bleach and that will be terrific and I will give this a vigorous shake up and put it back into the main bathroom okay so that's it for our soaps all good there and last thing I'm gonna do is fill up my Mrs. Myers with the concentrate and I'll go ahead and add some water first they weren't completely empty but they were getting to the point where they just weren't spraying great so might as well get that all taken care of. Okay. And I have the big concentrated basil. These concentrates are pretty affordable and they are pretty good. Um, cleaner as I, yeah. I think they're a really great cleaner. So I don't add a whole lot. I don't think it needs a whole lot. This one is for the kitchen. And then this one is actually for our main bathroom where we do our daily grooming. And I do put a little bit extra into this one because this is in the bathroom all the time. It's our daily shower cleaner. So you get out of the shower, you dry yourself off and then you spray this in the shower and then I don't have to scrub the shower endlessly. It's always at least presentable and it helps keep the soap scum and everything off. So I think that's a pretty good product. Sometimes I also use this, this multi-purpose cleaner from Grove, Grove Collaborative. Um, and this is very economical 
And again, I don't use it at full strength. Um, I think that you just don't really need it. Um, especially if you are spraying every day and then giving a good scrub down every once in a while, you'll stay in good shape. Okay, and these were just some cookies from the refrigerator chef section. I've never bought these before. It's not a product that I think that I've ever bought before, but they were a free item. And so we're gonna give them a whirl. I've had them in the freezer for a while. I did um, bring them up to refrigerator temperature and now I've sliced them and put them on my baking sheet. And that's one of the things I'm gonna be putting in the oven as we pack it full. Like I said, I don't know if these are good. How bad could they be? They're cookies. This is the bread that I purchased. Like I said, I had a coupon. I was well-intentioned. Sometimes you think something is going to save you money and it just doesn't work out. But we're going to make it work. So here I've got my loaf of bread and the other side of the cutting board from when I cut the cookies because we're trying to save out on doing a bunch of dishes. And I will save these bread bags. I will give it a little wash out and save it because sometimes I just need a disposable bag that I don't feel bad about throwing away. So we'll just go ahead and store that right there. And we've got our clean knife. And we have another prepared cookie sheet. And I use these parchment liners um, I get them through Amazon. They are very inexpensive. Um, one box of them usually lasts me about a year, and they are $15 for the box. I can't remember off the top of my head how much that or how many were in there, but I use several every day. Sometimes I reuse them because, you know, I want to get every dollar I can out of whatever it is that I purchase. And I'm just going to cube this bread up very informally, very casually. I'm not worried about it. And it just kind of made like a gluey mess. Um, I don't prefer my bread to be this soft for sandwiches. And I didn't think that it toasted especially well. So, but like I said, we bought it. We're going to use it. And what we're going to use it for is making a stuffing. So our first step is to cut it. And then we are going to put it into the oven with the cookies. And also with an egg substitution uh, product thing we're going to try out here. And then we're going to basically dehydrate these bread cubes in the oven and then we're going to add oh celery carrot onion thank you for preheating um celery carrot onion spices a little bit of chicken stock chicken broth maybe bouillon cube it depends on what i can find while i'm rattling around in here and then we're going to make like a stuffing and that will be delicious um, it could be a side dish or there is a possibility that we could make it into an entire meal um, by adding chicken to the stuffing because you will already have your veg with the carrot, celery, and onion. So we've got this all cubed up and then I will drizzle this with a little bit of olive oil and add some seasonings to it and then go ahead and just get this all dry and toasted. We also had the container of breadcrumbs from when we cleaned out the spice grinder. So I'm gonna get that. Don't wanna waste any if we can help it. Okay, so let's give it a whirl. Let's see what Manny's does to a Jiffy corn mix muffin product and see if they notice any taste difference if it has the same leavening power if it is 
delicious. Even Frost. Because even though a Jiffy Mix only takes one egg, well, in my neck of the woods, that is upwards of almost 50 cents just for the one egg. And you know, if you take care of the pennies and nickels and dimes, the dollars will take care of themselves. So let's give this a whirl here. I've got my Jiffy Mix. I've got one third cup of milk per the directions on the box. And then three tablespoons of mayonnaise will replace one egg per the directions I read on the internet. So I'll test it out. I'll let you know if that's really a good deal. Now, I so far think it's a good deal because even though it's three tablespoons of mayonnaise, this mayonnaise I got on sale for like $3.99 when they were on sale over the summer and it's not expired and stored correctly in the refrigerator. So at $3.99 for 30 fluid ounces, if I can substitute even a couple of eggs a week with that, that will be a serious win. I'm just gonna get a little measuring spoon, or pardon me, a little mixing spoon and just give this a little whisk up. Oh, we're going to need to butter our dish. Okay, that's all right. We'll do that here in a second. So just a little whiskey whisk. And I never really worry about this Jiffy Mix. I don't mix all of the lumps out of it. I just mix it till it's mostly smooth and well incorporated. And I don't think there's any need to get a blender, or food processor, or KitchenAid, or hand mixer out. It just takes a few minutes. If I had kids, maybe I'd let them do this. But let's go ahead and butter our dish. So I saved my butter wrappers because they always have a little bit of butter still stuck on them. And for this little plate, this little baking dish, I think this came with my Easy Bake Oven. Um, this little bit of butter is going to more than coat the surface of this and let it be as stick-free as humanly possible. And I will just work that into all the corners and up the sides until I feel like it's well greased. And if you don't have the little saved butter wrappers, then you know, use your spray or your oil or your Crisco or butter or your avocado oil, um, whatever you have, just go for it. But I just always save these butter wrappers for greasing a pan because I paid for it. I might as well get every dime I can out of it. Okay, well that seems grease to me and we'll put the remainder of the butter wrappers in the refrigerator for another day. Um, stored correctly in the refrigerator, I don't know, a month or two on these butter wrappers. Mine never seemed to last that long. Um, I was doing some things with butter. That's why I have so many right now. Um, I might put them in the freezer just to save, just to save them in case we go over, uh, you know, what I would deem to be a reasonable amount of time in the refrigerator. Food safety, food safety. I, it's important to me. So, You know, we used to, my mother used to save everything. And we, mom, please, do we have to save everything? And yes, we have to save everything. You never know when you might need that. And she used to buy cases and cases of canned fruits and veg. And we had pantry completely stocked with tons and tons of canned fruit and veg. Mom. Who in the world is ever going to eat 
you know, 74 cans of green beans. That's more green beans than anybody wants to eat. It's ridiculous to save that many. And she would always say in her very southern draw, y'all don't know. One of these days there might be a time when you can't buy, sell, or trade. And you might want these green beans. And we would laugh and say, oh, there's plenty of food at the grocery store. It's okay. And then I walked into a grocery store and there was nothing. So she wasn't wrong. And, you know, I could try to keep a little bit of a stock. Now, I do not need 74 cans of green beans. But a little bit back, that's okay. Mayonnaise purchased when it was super on sale in the summer is going to benefit me now. Found it. I found the breadcrumbs. So, yay. I'll just go ahead and sprinkle those right along inside of the bread cubes. Now, you could grind up all of this bread in the spice grinder and then toast it or put it in your food dehydrator and get that all going. And once that bread is dry, then you could have breadcrumbs for, uh, you know, whatever you might need breadcrumbs for, for chicken, for coating chicken, for uh, baking or pork chops, or if you need your uh, breadcrumbs to thicken something. Um, a lot of uses for dried breadcrumbs and making them in your own is really just as easy as putting them into that spice grinder and it did it 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 did grind them very finely so yeah so you, we could be making breadcrumbs if we needed them I have quite a lot right now so I don't need any breadcrumbs but stuffing is kind of a favorite around here and I don't want to spend three dollars on a stovetop product that's kind of outside of my willingness to spend for a side dish okay the final thing that I want to put into the oven is this Jiffy corn mix corn muffin mix we're not going to make muffins because I don't really care for them but we're going to use this really small teeny tiny um, pan to make one box because I read that you could substitute an egg with three tablespoons of mayonnaise instead which makes perfect sense because the mayonnaise is egg based um, I'm thinking that this is going to be a good test because I know how a Jiffy muffin should taste from the box um, these are very inexpensive like 64 cents at my fries so if it doesn't turn out, I'm not going to feel terrible about wasting this. Um, and I think that this is a good way to see if the mayonnaise really will work as a substitute in baking for eggs. Because Lord, the price of eggs. Have mercy. Okay, so let's go ahead and pour our Jiffy mix into this pan. And this is more than enough cornbread that we will eat probably over two or three days um, with just the two of us here at the house. I wish I had gotten a spatula instead of this instead of this spoon, but that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna make it work here because that's part of the economy. You know, part of the economy of not only getting every little bit, but also how much do you have to wash? Because I get tired of washing dishes. It is not my favorite thing. I really don't enjoy it that much. I try to enjoy it. I will often put on an audiobook or music or something when I am washing dishes to try to make it go a little bit faster, a little bit nicer. Um, but... My, I'm wet. I'm touching things that, you know, might be a little bit, you know, slimy or food particle or what have you. It's not my favorite. It's just not. So if we can eliminate a dish, that's not only a great use of your time, but also like 
I live in the desert southwest. We have to watch every drop of water we're using right now. And that's one of the reasons why I'm okay with using the parchment paper because it will probably, that piece of parchment paper probably doesn't even cost me 10 cents. We'll do the math here in a little bit. Doesn't even cost me 10 cents and but it may very well save me in water usage and while i live in an area where our water is not necessarily expensive in the winter time it is very expensive in the summertime our water weight our water rates go way up in the summertime and so does our electricity and that's a whole nother topic that we'll talk about some other day, but I'm trying to have a very calm day. So I'm not going to talk about our electric company today. So yeah, we're going to get every dollar out of this oven. We're going to cook this stuff all together. Um, this cornbread's supposed to cook at 400 degrees, I think. Yeah. These breadcrumbs could cook at 400 degrees. The cookies are going to cook at 350 degrees. So what we're going to do is split it in the middle and cook at 375. And I'm going to watch the cookies really closely. Those are going to be the first ones to come out. The breadcrumbs, those are probably going to take a little bit of time. So I'm not going to worry about those. I think this takes 10, 12, oh, 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm going to watch the two items um, regular items, the breadcrumbs, I'm not going to worry about so much, but you know what I realized is that we did not oil and season our breadcrumbs. So let's go ahead and do that really quick before we get them in the oven. Okay. Back to our bread cubes. And let me just grab some olive oil. And I think we're going to just use a little bit of seasonal. This is a Morton seasonal. It's um, just something I buy at the grocery store. And it's just a combination of garlic salt, onion salt, regular salt, paprika, celery salt, I, all kinds of different salts. It's a pretty good seasoner for just about everything. And I will be seasoning these pretty liberally. I don't know how much, just until, you know, that meme that's going around. I just season until the voice of my ancestors tells me to stop. And Lord, my mama could use some salt. That woman liked salt on everything. It was a lot. And I don't really feel like getting my hands all oily. And I'm going to need these tongs for something else I'm going to do. So I will just go ahead and give these a little stir up with the tongs. And then... My hands won't get all gooky and then we will use this same set of tongs later in the day for making some dinner or whatever else we need them for anything else that won't be you know worried about getting it with seasoned salt and olive oil if this was a potentially hazardous food product raw chicken raw beef eggs shrimp um seafood of any kind uh anything that might need to be cooked for to a specific temperature for food safety i would not reuse these tongs i would put these immediately into the sink or the dishwasher and not use them for anything else but this is not potentially hazard hazardous food it's just bread it'll be fine all right, so let's load up my oven over here. It's already preheated. When I was in high school, I'm gonna put these on the lower rack. 
When I was in high school, I took home economics. Mrs. Richardson did not believe that your oven needed to be preheated because this was not the 1950s and your oven would be just fine if you put your items in cold and then that, that didn't work. This pan is a little bit large. I should have measured it before I bought it, but I didn't. That's a shame on me. So, okay. There we go. We've got our cookies in there. We've got our cornbread. We've got our uh, bread cubes. And I'm just going to go ahead and set this for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight minutes because we're cooking at a slightly higher temperature than uh, recommended on the package of Easy Bake Cookies. Mrs. Richardson did not believe that you needed to preheat your oven, that it was a waste of money, that the stoves today, the stoves and ovens today were much more economical than they used to be and performed better and that this was in the 1950s and you did not need to preheat your oven. For some things, she is correct. And then for other things, I believe that you're better off with a preheated oven, especially like the cornbread and the cookies because of the baking soda and baking flour. They're gonna need a minimum temperature for them to do their full rising, even though they won't rise much. Um, well, the cornbread might, but um, even though they won't rise much, they're gonna need that rapid heat. They're not gonna wanna sit in there while it heats up. Now, if I was putting a casserole in or something like that, I would not preheat. I agree with Mrs. Richardson. Your oven is efficient enough. You can just slap that right in and it can warm up with the rest of your oven and take a few minutes off of your potential uh, baking time. Okay, our Easy Bake cookies came out of the oven. They look super yummy. And we're just gonna put them on this little pedestal. I usually fill this up every week with some kind of a treat or a baked good. Um, Andrew loves the ease and convenience of just lifting the lid and grabbing it. Um, we've had this one a very long time and usually it gets filled with something from the uh, day old bakery rack at my grocery store. They didn't have anything and I needed a little something because like I said, he needs a little dessert at the end of the day. And so we've got these easy bake cookies. Those were no problem at all. I don't really enjoy baking all that much. Um, it is certainly not my favorite thing. And these are just quick and easy and I hope they taste good. He'll be the taste tester for them. And we'll just go ahead and put the cloche on to keep them fresh. This is a very heavy cloche and so it does keep the items in there especially fresh. And if I don't find a bargain um, in the day old section and I don't feel like baking anything, sometimes I will just even fill this up with like little Debbie snack cakes and he's perfectly okay with that. But he just really likes his little fancy things. I like doing these little things for him. He works hard. He deserves a little treat. It didn't take me a second. And I gave this a little wash up and um, dusted it off because we live in the desert southwest. There's Also coming out of the oven is our breadcrumbs or our breadcrumbs and our bread cubes for stuffing and they toasted nicely and they're really dry and pretty hard. Now I won't have these for long term storage because I did put olive oil on them and that can go rancid especially where I live because our temperatures are higher than most people's. So um, I will be using these probably within the week or I will be putting them in a bag to store in the refrigerator or freezer until I'm ready to go because we, like I said, we do have a problem with things going rancid. Oils, nuts, um, anything that, that is oil-based or has an oily consistency, 
um, typically is not shelf stable long where I live. So, you know what, this would be the perfect use for that bread bag. I'm gonna go get that. Okay, our last item just came out of the oven. So we staggered everything. We cooked all at the same time. And this is the Jiffy Cornbread Mix. And it looks and smells just like I used an egg. So on appearance and smell, totally awesome. See how it tastes when it cools off a little bit. Well, we had a really productive day. We tried an egg substitution recipe and saved a little money. We re refilled some things, made some cookies, and we also made some corn, or pardon me, some bread cubes for stuffing. We're going to use those later on in the week, but they're going to be super yummy. Really excited about that. And so my day is not done. I've got a few more things on my list, and you'll see those in the next video. A little bit of dehydrating, what's for dinner, and making chicken stock. So stay tuned for the next video. Again, thanks for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn, and I've been very glad to have you.